thinking about buying a home, you might be stressed out knowing that we are in a seller's market. So in this video, I'm going to break down my top tips for how to do this in a seller's market effectively. Hey, Nick Deckard here. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time, do me a favor. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you hit that little notification bell. Let's dive right into my top six tips for how to buy a home in a seller's market. Let's tackle the biggest one first. Number one, make your best offer your first offer. I know, I hear you. When you're buying a home, you want to get it for the best possible price. You want to save as much as you can, and I hear you. But this is not your parents' housing market. Sellers now have the ability to pick what offer they want, which ties directly into my second tip, which is don't expect to have the ability to negotiate. Most homes that are hitting the market do have multiple interested buyers within the first week. So if you come in holding back and not putting your best foot forward, most sellers are going to take their time in making that decision with the expectation, understandably so, that they will likely get the price that they're asking for, if not very close to it. So don't expect that you're gonna have the opportunity or ability to counter. Tip number three, and this can be an uncomfortable one, but when you're in this process, you have to be ready to bid. Now the term bidding war is not exactly what I would call what actually happens when you're in these multi-offer situations. But when it comes down to it, most sellers, when they have multiple interested buyers, they've got multiple offers, are going to ask for everybody's best and final. Now that is every individual seller's choice, whether they go that route or if they decide to negotiate with the best offer that they have or accept one outright if it's strong enough for them. So to set yourself apart, you need to go in understanding that you may need to put what we call an escalation clause in your offer. And what that says is that yes, I am offering asking price, but if there's another buyer that comes in, I am willing to escalate or increase my offer by a certain amount or a certain percent of that asking price. So that happens automatically. So hypothetically, let's say you have a $500,000 property. You offer $500,000, but your escalation clause says, hey, if there's another buyer, I'm going to beat them by $5,000. So if somebody else comes in and offers asking price as well, guess what? Your offer is automatically $505,000. You are automatically more appealing than buyer number two. So just know going into this that you have to be ready to bid. And that brings us to tip number four, which is show cash. And I don't mean you have to pay for the entire purchase in cash. If you can, that's beautiful. But if you can't, that's okay. Your next best option is to increase your earnest money deposit. By doing that, you're showing the seller that you're serious about this, that you are unlikely to bail out partway through and they have to have the hassle of getting back on the market, having more showings. They don't want to deal with that. So by putting down a strong deposit versus a weak deposit, you separate yourself from other buyers. In this hypothetical, your buyer A, you come in with $100,000 down. Buyer B comes in with $1,000 down. As the seller, who would you choose? All else equal, it's not even a choice. You separate yourself tenfold versus another buyer simply by showing how serious you are. And guess what? There are a lot of contingencies in that contract where that deposit gets returned to you. So it's not monopoly money, but it's the closest thing to it. Tip number five, offer strong terms. And by that, typically you reduce your contingencies. As I just mentioned in our contracts here in Ocean City, we have a ton of contingencies in our contracts that are very buyer friendly. By reducing some of those or meeting the seller on some of their terms, your offer is stronger while not having to go up in price. So for example, let's say that you are open to and you have a relationship with a home inspector or your agent does, and you're confident that you can get the home inspections done within five days versus the typical 15 days. That will give the seller comfort that you are intentional on making this a fast transaction. And if not, if things don't work out, they don't waste much time. They can get right back on the market and not miss out on any other buyers. So by giving stronger terms or more appealing terms, you are setting yourself up to win. And if you're working with a good buyer's agent, they'll find out some of those things for you. What is important to the seller? What exactly are they looking for from a closing date, for instance? Without that, you're flying blind. So make sure you're working with a strong buyer's agent who can set you up for success. And last but not least, we have one of the most important tips. 
make sure you submit a video or a letter with your offer to buy a home. That gives you an option and an opportunity really to connect with the seller without ever having met them. So as an example, let's say you notice the home you're seeking to buy has a great rose garden out front. Clearly the sellers valued their garden, growing their plants and making their house feel like a home. Well, if you take a video in front of your own garden at home, showing that you will be a great choice to take care of their pride and joy, you now give them a reason to connect with you, to separate you and their minds away from the numbers, away from the prices. I've even seen, not in the past few months, but about a year and a half ago, a buyer won the multi-offer situation despite not having the best price. And personally, about five years ago when I bought my first home, we won despite not having the highest offer simply because we connected with the sellers through our ability and desire to raise a family, to care for their home like it's our own, and we pulled on their heartstrings a little bit along the way to our benefit. So that's it. Those are my top six tips on how you can successfully buy a home in a seller's market. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, drop them down below in the comments or feel free as always to reach out directly. All of my contact information is in the description. Appreciate you coming by and I will see you on the next video.